It's been a while. Should we have a crafty chat? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be having a chatty video today. We are talking crochet projects, we are talking what's coming up, and we are talking about how I've become an absolute air fryer. I'm probably gonna need to bleep that out. Air fryer nerd, air fryer person. Huge fan of my new air fryer. We'll get to that a bit later. Don't worry, I won't bore you with it now. But I do really love it. So today was supposed to be a sewing video. We were supposed to be doing the little Easter Bunny uh, gift bags. But to be honest, the weather is absolutely rubbish. It has been raining all week. It is really horrible and grey outside. And I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling springy. I'm not feeling Eastery. But I did think I would share with you some of the bits that I've been making over the last week or so that I've just been hunkering down, I've been getting into my crochet, so I thought I would show you what I've been making. By the way, I will make the Easter bag video, it has just been probably in a week or two when the weather looks like remotely springy. So, the first project that I have been making, you guys are gonna love it. Well, I mean, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, because <laughs> we all know how the sewed, sewn collars were a bit of a Marmite subject. So I wonder if <laughs> this one might be a bit of a Marmite subject as well. I think that it's, he and it's not hexagons. It's, oh, I haven't cut the, um, I haven't sewn the ends in properly. I don't know if you can see that. Don't look at it. Um, it's Pentagon granny squares granny pentagons which I have never made before um, but I have since obviously five times I've made it with how many did I use six I used six of them and I had some cotton that I'd bought from hobby and I thought I'd use that up which so I have one two three four colors in here and I used um I'd say 50% of the balls, so I could probably make another one of these. But I think it looks really cute. And I mean, obviously not with this. This, by the way, is the Honey Juice Mock dress, but it's just in a top because I didn't have enough fabric. So I couldn't, I was gonna wear this Christmas day, but I couldn't because I would have gone out exposing myself. So I've put it in a top now. Um, but this was a self-drafted pattern which was really super easy, super simple, and it looked really cute with a little outfit. I like it, I think it looks sweet. I'm having a terrible hair day today. I don't know what's wrong. It's the weather, it's all the rain that makes it curly and then makes it flat, and how you can be curly and flat at the same time is beyond me. Okay, crochet project number two that I've been making for the last week is a little, uh, cropped jumper for the eight-year-old she wanted it she wanted little flouty sleeves as well which I like I think it looks really sweet obviously I'm not uh, very keen on little girls wearing cropped jumpers so she has to wear a t-shirt or something underneath it or a little um, just to go over the top but she really wanted a little cropped one and it's got a little boat neck um, I used this, I used, what pattern did I use? I think I just freehanded it, but based the measurements on my Bonnie jumper pattern, which I will get to later. But yeah, she absolutely adores it. It whipped up in two days and a whole day of it was the sleeves. I hate doing sleeves more than anything. I hate doing sleeves, but she's worth it. So that's really cute. That was... It was an Aran weight, 400 gram ball of emu yarn uh, in pink. And I've only used half the ball and she wants a cardigan as well. So I'm going to use the other half of the ball for a cardigan along with another contrasting color, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, and the third thing, I'm currently halfway through this project. So you're gonna have to bear with. This is a jumper. <laughs> I promise it's a jumper. Um, this is a jumper for the 11 year old. She saw this jumper in Primark and I said absolutely not. We will, mummy can make you one of those. That Not that obviously it's just as cheap to buy the jumper as it is to 
by the wall and spend hours doing it. Um, but this is, so this stitch, I've literally just, I chained two, double crochet, or triple crochet if you're in the UK. Chain two, triple crochet, and it has come up with this sort of meshy looking pattern. Um, I've scooped around the front and it's a little bit cropped. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some ribbing along the bottom. I've got long sleeves to go on. Again, she wants fluty sleeves. So we've got some sleeves to go on, which I'm working on at the moment. I'm gonna put some ribbing around the top and then that should be done. I think I'll have that done by the weekend. But yeah, I think that looks really cute. She liked that hopefully. So that's what I've been up to and what I've been crocheting. Would you like to know what I've been doing the last couple of weeks? Okay, this may veer off crocheting and sewing and crafting, but this first one relates. I have been rewriting the Bonnie jumper pattern, which I wrote as a crochet pattern. You can purchase it from Lovecrafts, it's down below. Um, I've just been adding more sizes to it. So I think the pattern itself is in an age four to five and a six to seven. And I have added age two to three, eight to nine and 10 to 11. So it's covering a wider range now. Um, so that's been lots of fun. I've still got to test, cause the new one isn't quite up yet. I've still got to test the two to three, which will be interesting. As well as the uh, Bonnie jumper pattern, I've got another couple of crochet patterns for sale and I might write up the um, crop jumper and pop that up for sale as well. I'm thinking that I'm only gonna put them like a pound or two pound or something. Oh, and maybe the crochet collar as well. I don't know, we'll see. It takes a lot of effort to write it all up because when you're sort of just shorthanding it and you're going like 62, 43, 99, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that in my head, it makes sense. Whereas when you're writing it out, you want to make sure that everyone gets it completely on point and it's really, really easy to explain. So it's not as easy to write it as it is to work with my shorthand patterns that I've got, that I've like written up in my books. I don't know if that makes any sense. Hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that I've been doing is because it's Lent and so long story, hubby and I decided we were going to give up TV in the bedroom at night times from February. And then we thought, oh, actually we'll do it for the whole of Lent, which is until March the 29th. I think. Um, so we've been having a lot of extra time in the bedroom to be able to read. Get your minds out of the gutters. So I thought I would run through really quickly what I've been reading so far. If this is not your kind of content, skip forward to the next bit where I'm talking more about crochet. So the first book I read was The Coworker by Freedom McFadden. Amazing amazing my 14 year old bought me this for christmas because she's lovely um it's so good it's it's got um oh no i can't tell you what sort of vibes it's got because that will ruin the story but basically it's about a co-worker who goes missing and then it's all about how the you sort of like look back in history and look at look back in the past and look back at like how she was treated and who had it in for her and stuff like that it's all really really good Definitely recommend. Four out of five for that one. Uh, the next one that I read was Yoko Ogawa, The Housekeeper and The Professor. Um, I am obsessed with Japanese literature, all things Japanese really, but Japanese literature at the moment, I would say I'm obsessed. I'm easing my way in. I've read about four different authors of Japanese literature so far. So this one is uh, no exception slow, methodical. It's about a professor who has short-term memory loss and, oh no, well, he can only remember things for 80 minutes and that's it. Then it sort of wipes it clean like a um, goldfish or something. But he's a maths professor and so he's really, really good with numbers, those he can remember, but people and, you know, life, not so great. So that's a really, really good one. Three out of five. Okay, this final book needs explaining a little bit more. So, um, oh, there's two reasons to it, actually. One, the children and I saw a ballet on TV called Metamorphosis, and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Turns out it was written by 
uh, Franz Kafka. And then there's a Japanese book called Kafka on the Shore, which is really, really big. It's by Murakami and I wanted to read it, but I felt like I couldn't read it until I'd read some actual Kafka. Um, I've read some, one to miss. <laughs> it was so heavy going. I'm a good reader. That was not okay. <laughs> it's just endless. And I know it's been translated and I'm sure there's lots of like amazing, there's gonna be like literature professors screaming at me going you've got no idea about the context behind the text and stuff like that but no thank you but no and this is the book that i'm on at the moment how to kill your family by bella mackey uh just because i wanted like a bit of an easy read uh so i already bought this book on kindle and because i kept like looking at my screen and i thought this is a really bad example for the children I managed to find this at the charity shop for a pound. So I've read like half of it on Kindle and now I'm reading the other half IRL, um, which makes it a lot easier for bedtime. What's the point of getting rid of the TV if you're just gonna look at another screen anyway? So that's that one that I'm reading at the moment. And then I've got book club coming up at the end of the month. Wait, at the end of March. And we are going to be reading The Red Tent by Anna Diamant. Diamant? Anita, this lady. It's about uh, Rachel and Leah from the Bible, from, <laughs> from the Old Testament. And um, oh, the red tent was like where the, all the women used to get sent to have their periods. And then it's all about sort of like the politics and um, everything in the red tent and how there were some women, uh, there were some wives, and then there were some concubines, and then there was like slaves and stuff like that, and how like they all would like fight and vie for each other, and how half of them fancied each other's husbands, stuff like that. It's really good. I've read it before. I'm reading it again for book club. I don't know how book club will feel about it. It'll be interesting. Okay, and to round up the what have I been doing section, um, so got a friend she's 80 years old I went round her house and she convinced me she influenced me <laughs> to buy an air fryer <laughs> right you know when these people they get so invested and they're like oh a filly you can do this with it and you can do that with it and she was like think about when you're cooking dinner for the kids you can put it a bit in here and you can put a bit in there and then you can get loads of different meals well I mean I fell for it hook line and sink <laughs> I'm really easily influenced anyway. I'll buy any old tat off the internet. But for an 80 year old woman to sit there and go, oh, tell you what you need in your life. And I was like, of course I do. How did I not know this? <laughs> so I text my husband and said, I really feel like we could do with an air fryer really. Lo and behold, that evening he comes home with one that he's found off Face Bay, which was, uh, what have I got? The Ninja Foodie. I'll put a picture up. I don't know why I'm putting a picture up. <laughs> Here's my baby. Isn't it amazing? Um, so I've got the Ninja Foodie and it does everything. It's got slow cooker, pressure cooker, steam, air frying, all sorts of things. I've made everything in it so far. If it doesn't move, it's going in the air fryer. I've made pasta bake. I've made rice, I've made vegetables, I've done chicken thighs, I've done sausages, I did sausage pasta, oh, I've done cakes. For lunch, I'm having a cheese and marmite toasty, which I'm gonna put in it. That was the idea of one of the kids this morning. I said, I think I might make a toasty in the air fryer for lunch. And she went, oh, you should make it a cheese and marmite one. <laughs> yes, I should, kid, you are right. So basically, I've become one of those ridiculous air fryer obsessed people and I hate myself for it but at the same time I'm also loving it so I mean I promise there will be no air frying content this is the only time I'm going to talk about it hopefully I can't promise anything on Instagram however Instagram will be like ah I guess what I look like I'm having for dinner again oh, it'll be a nightmare but yes the air fryer has taken up a lot of my time <laughs> It's becoming my new obsession. I love it almost as much as I love crocheting. Right, on to what have I got coming up? So, a lot of crafting. Is it all crafting? Oh, yeah, it's all crafting. 
got a little list, you see. <laughs> I've got all crafting coming up. I want to start by showing you the fabric that I bought to go with, oh, it smells a bit. I'm going to wash it, but this is the fabric that I bought for the um, Easter sewing bags, which, put a picture there. Uh, I absolutely love it and I'm really surprised. I'll tell you why I'm surprised by how much I love it. These are fat quarters. I'm going to slide my way through them as we talk. These are from Amazon and they are seven fat quarters of springy looking fabric and they were like eight quid. Now you can get what is it a pack of six from Hobbycraft and they were eight quid so I am over the moon with the fact that I managed to pick I managed to grab these and they were delivered next day sometimes in some cases depending on how far away you live from the depot I love that one you can have a dress out of that um you can get them same day and the quality is surprisingly good I was expecting cheap and nasty for the fact that it was from Amazon. Really impressed so far. So these are gonna be for the treat bags. I've got to decide which ones are the inners and which ones are the outers. I think I would probably go for like bright then bold. So that one will be the outside and that one will be the inside. But I'm so pleased with the quality. I'm just shooketh. Absolutely shooketh. If you would like to uh, purchase the fat quarter bundles, then you can, by all means, go down below and uh, clicky, clicky o linky, and then I think I get like 3p if you buy one. So that's nice. Thank you very much. The next thing I'm going to be making is a cardigan. I have a whole bundle of wool. Hang on. Oh. Ba -ba -ba -ba. A whole bundle of wool from Emu Yarns. I will not go through um, each one, but I will pop my short in here. <laughs> a pastel colorway this is because this is because oh no i'm dropping them all <laughs> ah! this is because the teenager wants oh she's not quite a teenager the nearly teenager wants um a granny square cardigan but i don't know if she does want full granny square or if she wants um a patchwork one so we'll have to see. I'm going to get her to have a look through Pinterest. I've selected a few that have got some granny squares, some plain patches, and then, but it's all in those colours. She selected those colours. So I'm just going to have to work our way through that. I'll do a video on it um, when it's coming up. I've just got to finish her other jumper and then I can get started on that one. And yeah, hopefully it'll look great. If you do see any patterns or have any ideas, please do pop them down in the comments below. That would be amazing. So further to um, the conversation that we had what feels like three hours ago about uh, the little one's jumper, the little one's cardigan is going to be made out of these guys. So she wants like matching or contrasting panels. I'll see if I can pop a picture up there. And I will show you what I mean. But this is, oh, this is the last of my Mariner's yarn. And this is the other half of the ball. This was the Emu. And this is the last of the Mariner's. And it is chunky. But because it's contrasting panels, I don't think it'll be a problem. R.I.P. Mariner's. R.I.P. Mariner's. There is a shop in town, actually. I was in there the other day. And they are still selling the Mariner's stock. Now, is that because that shop isn't very popular? Is that because that shop has like unlimited, they basically bought out all of Mariner's? Maybe they've got a secret supplier, who knows? But this is the last of the Mariner's that I have in my stock. It's the mermaid chunky, what color is it? 237. 
I think it looks really nice. Hopefully, she'll really like that too. Okay, and the final thing that I wanted to talk to you about, which I am going to be doing coming up, I really need your help with it. So, I am helping to set up a creative circle in the local area. It is going to look a little bit like a like a knit and natter group crossed with a WI meeting, crossed with a um, Swedish study circle style thing. I'm not explaining it very well, but basically it's gonna be a creative space where everyone can come together and we can learn from each other's crafts, we can learn from each other's creative arts. I would absolutely love to get some drama down there and to do like some visual arts and things like that. It would be absolutely amazing. But what I would love from you guys is to hear what sort of thing you would attend. So um, it's not gonna be, it's only gonna be a couple of pound for like the social events. And then we're hopefully gonna have some speakers and have some experts in their field come and talk to us and things, which would like, it would basically cover the cost of that. But I would really love to hear what sort of things you would be interested in if if it was in your local area. So I know that through our lives, we've chatted about um, different socials and things like that and retreats and day workshops, and they seem really, really useful for people. So I would really love to hear what would you be interested in seeing? And obviously, if you are local to the East Devon area, then by all means, come along once I've sorted it out and publicised it a little bit. So that's everything I've been up to. That's everything I've got going on. And then that's everything that's going to be coming up. I know this has been a bit of a chatty one. Um, if you enjoy the chatty ones, then do come and join us on our lives every single week apart from the fact that they are on Friday lunch times at the moment and not Tuesday evenings. I'm wondering if I'm gonna end up doing both, but um, check in the links and you'll be able to find when the next live is on. And that's basically just us sitting together, talking and crafting at the same time. But for now, I have rambled on for long enough. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that the weather is better and I hope that wherever you are, it's a lot sunnier. See you soon, bye. I've got to use my hand then. <laughs>